No movie with a $38 million budget, this cast, and these locations should be this bad. What's up everybody? Happy October and welcome to my review of The Nun 2. Real quick disclaimer, I want to get this out of the way. If you went to the theater and you enjoyed this film and you really, really liked it, you're excited about it and it delivered for you, I am genuinely happy for you this review is not for you to watch i my goal is not to just crap on films that people love it really is not and so if you really enjoyed this film and i know a few people that i follow on letterbox really really enjoyed this and they were super pleased with this my goal is really not to just sit here and crap over something you love so this review is not for you i appreciate you tuning in just skip to my next video but from here on out this is going to be a spoiler filled review and to be completely honest with you, I saw this when it came out weeks ago. I don't even really remember it that much. I just remember I hated it. So I'm going to touch on some positives and mostly negatives that I did not like about this film. I was actually pretty excited about The Nun 2 because we have a new director. I did not like the first Nun. And so I was excited to see the guy who did Conjuring 3, The Curse of the Law Yorona, I have not seen, but I did see The Conjuring 3 and I thought it was a Decent horror film. Not great, but decent. Very, very well, uh, at least decently well directed, like, you know, from a director that could grow and get better. And I thought, you know, maybe we could get something good from this. I, I thought the trailer looked decent and, you know, it looked like they were really trying to come up with something better. The, the set and the location looked good. So I was actually kind of excited about this. And boy, did I absolutely hate this film. So starting off, just real quick with some of the positives, things that I do think that they did well in The Nun 2 are getting a new director in because I did not like the first film. So overall, I think it was a good idea to go with a fresh director. I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but we need some fresh eyes in this franchise because it could be a good franchise. And I do think that some of the sets are great. They filmed in a real church, apparently, and uh, it looks great. Or it looks like it could be great. Anyway, uh, I don't think they made good use of those sets but the sets look good i do feel like with some of the set pieces in the film and the story they're trying to tell it does seem like they tried in this film seems like the director was trying to do something new something different something unique was trying to put his own spin on it i feel like he tried i do feel like the setting the tone overall of the film will give you some of that October creepy vibes. You know, if you like the first nun, you'll probably like this film. I think that you could turn your brain off and have an okay time, but that's about it. I mean, honestly, the setting is cool. It should have been better, but that's really, that's all that I can say positives about the film. Getting into the things I hated about this film. Oh my gosh, this $38 million. Are you serious? In filmed in a real church? And this is what we get. I mean, just to try to put some cohesive thought into this review, the acting is awful across the board. The main character, uh, Farmiga, whatever her name is, Thaisa Farmiga, she's terrible in this film. I don't think she's a bad actress by any means. I actually think she's, she's better in the first film. I don't think she's a bad actress. I just think she's terrible. She's Seems like she's phoning it in. She has nothing to work with. I mean, I really feel like they just like just rolled camera, first take, cut, print, went with it. There's just no talent across the board in this film. And I don't mean that in terms of the actors. I mean, there's nothing on display. The, the uh, person who played the nun, nobody. None of the side characters, the sidekick comedian uh, or comedy relief friend, of the main character was terrible. All the rest of the nuns are terrible. The acting is absolutely terrible across the board. So bad that I honestly, I I feel like I was. It almost was like a comedy at times. Speaking of comedy, let me just get into the music real quick. I'm genuinely the music is so bad that when a bad music in a horror film can just not serve its purpose, but this music in it's so bad, and I'm not trying to just rip it apart for the sake of ripping it apart. It's really bad, to the point where it's genuinely distracting. I was watching this, and I, no joke, I was trying to like this film. I really was. 
I almost started laughing in the theater during certain parts because the music was so bad. It was so bad. It was like just so on the nose to the point where it almost was like a suspenseful, like a spy movie. And it was like, do, 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 do. And it, it genuinely was like so on the nose that I, I'm so loud that I almost laughed like three times during the sad parts. The music is just like, mm, just like so on the nose. It just was some of the worst music I've heard in a horror film in a long time. The Nun 2 is shot horribly. I mean, it's definitely it's bare bones shot. OK with a 30 million, 30 million dollar budget. Okay, so like a 38 million dollar budget should be shot okay. And that's exactly what you get from this film. It's just cohesive enough to follow what the heck is going on. It makes absolutely, they have beautiful sets, beautiful set design, and it makes terrible use of it. You can't tell like what's inside, what's in another country, from what's in the basement, from like what is in the bridge area, from like what's supposed to be like roped off. You can't tell what the heck is going on. What's a stone angel from what's a staircase? Like everything looks like they put work into it, but it's shot so incompetently that you can't even tell and edited so incompetently that you can't tell like where you are or where the characters are, what's supposed to be going on at the time that it's happening. And the scares in this film, I mean, I just I, I've heard some people say that they really felt like they were suspenseful. Oh my, I just it's they're literally the most predictable. And boring scares. Like a scare shouldn't be so boring that you are actually sitting there waiting to get to the predictability part because they're trying to like throw you off and you're just so bored out of your mind, you can't wait for them just to show you what you already know is gonna happen, but you have to wait five minutes. I got I'm, I found myself just waiting, waiting for these ridiculous, like he's here, he's there, he's not there, it's here, it's not there, scares. To get to the inevitable cliched scare in the end anyway. And it just, I mean, it makes no logical sense. None of the scares make any logical sense with the story. They try that scare with the magazines flipping in the middle of like the hallway outdoors or whatever. And like the concept is there. Okay, cool. But you know, like we know from the trailer, but even if you didn't see the trailer, you know the nun's gonna show up. You can see this. You can see the shape of the nun being drawn. And after you've already seen the shadow like pop out at you 27 times in this film, you, you know it's going to happen. But you have to wait for every page to flip until you finally, oh, I can almost see the nun. No, wait, got to wait for her face. Oh, how is that suspenseful? Did they really think that we didn't know that that was going to happen? You could practically see it drawn out, but you still have to wait. For, and then, and then on top of all that, while you sit there and wait for every magazine to flip, the character still turns around. Why? Why did she turn around? She waited for the entire thing to show up. You can see it's none, but then she still turns around just so we can get the turnaround jump scare. I I honestly can't I can't think of worse scares in a in a horror a thirty eight million dollar horror film that I've seen in a long time, and it just doesn't make any sense with the plot anyway. Like she's following this boy, but then she just like she's st I can't even remember honestly what happens in the movie, but I remember it doesn't make any logical sense why she's even following the boy and why there's these magazines out there and why things are happening it makes no sense at all. And oh, it just. Terrible, terrible scares. In the Nun 2, we see Valak, the nun from the first film, or demon, excuse me, from the first film, taking the shape of a nun again. But in this film, they really hammer home that it takes the shape of what scares you the most, but it stays in the guy's body for like half of the movie. Is that guy the scariest thing? Because that one girl has feelings for him? And because she, the nun from the first film, knew him, so that's the scariest thing that the demon can come up with. But then also, no, so nuns and, and maintenance men, I guess, are the scariest things 
that demons want to possess. At least that's what this film is really trying to hammer home because that's what it takes the form of for a majority of the film. Demon is also going from place to place, killing nun after nun, little boy after little boy, looking for these eyes of St. Lucy, St. Lucy. And uh, apparently, you know, it's just like they're really hard to find. They're really old and they're going to give this demon a lot of power. But like, you know, they wanted the demon wanted to try other things first in the first movie. But now it's like, oh, you know, nothing's going to stop the demon, you know, but they, like, they just don't know where the dyes are. Uh, but you, I don't think that they ever thought the demon ever thought to go to a library and ask the librarian. You know, because like the librarian seems to know exactly where the eyes are. So good thing that uh, our main character went to the library and um, asked asked the librarian where the eyes were. No problem, right? You know, uh, the demon should have thought of that. I don't know why the Valak never thought to go to the library. Climax of this film just doesn't work at all. The It doesn't make any sense getting up to that point. And by the time you get there, it's so obvious and so clear that they're going to do the thing that they do in every movie that they've done forever. The main character will get the upper hand for like a second and then, oh, twist, the the antagonist, you know, the villain is going to get get the upper hand, get that magic item back and all, you know, all bets are off now. But somehow, magically, the main character, even though they stood no chance, is going to find some hope inside of them or some help to overcome this impossible feat that shouldn't happen, but they will pull it off because of things that have been set up in the movie beforehand, you know, to make us know that that will, that will work, even though they lose that magic item, the MacGuffin, the thing that they needed that the villain just absolutely cannot get their hands on. And that's just, I mean, it just falls completely flat. Even if you're on board for the plot and the story it just it's just like you know floating up in the air a bunch of cgi stuff and then it's over and it just feels like a climax that led to absolutely nothing and honestly i i watched the nun too and i wanted to rip it a new one but and i and i kind of i mean i have a little bit but i can barely even remember the movie it's just so uneventful so unimpactful, so unoriginal. It's cliche after cliche after cliche, except for they do the worst possible thing is they actually make you wait through cliches to get to an inevitable cliche. You know, like something like Smile gets criticism for being generic and cliched, but they found interesting ways of doing cliches. This movie finds boring ways of doing the same old thing, and then they still just do that anyway. Nothing new, and I'm just honestly so disappointed because I just like, why do we have $38 million horror films to see, you know, spinoffs of good movies that are coming out that are this bad? It just, the fact that they got real locations and they got that kind of money, this movie just should not be this bad. It just should. It's honestly, it's kind of insulting. And I, and, you know, people probably are thinking like, you love it, you like it, whatever, it's a movie. But it genuinely, we need better films for these kind of budgets with these kind of, you know, sets and these kind of properties. We need better films. We need people to look at the scripts, watch these movies before they release them. And like, I'm not talking about like studios micromanaging. I'm talking about like from the get go in the drawing room, like when they're coming up with the script, we need to come up with better ideas and hire better actors and better okay i shouldn't say better actors my because i don't think all the actors are necessarily bad better directors better writers better people who are, are more equipped to make these films because or or make give them smaller budgets you know give them tiny budgets and have them kind of like do their thing and give these directors first time you know chances whatever 38 million dollars is not a small budget for a horror film so thanks for sticking through the review everybody i appreciate you all watching did you see the nun 2 did you watch the nun 2 or did you just go straight through the views because you didn't think it looked good what did you think were you were you happy with it yeah you still watched my review or is somebody out there as frustrated with the film as i am because i feel like a lot of people have either really liked it or just don't care about it so 
Let me know what you think below. I hope everyone is having an awesome October and thanks for watching.